church family and friends. Thank you so much for being with us today. We've arrived to the first Sunday of October, so today we'll be participating in the Lord's Supper. If you haven't yet, please gather your communion elements and round up your family while you're up. Also, with it being October, I have to acknowledge that it is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's this month that we pay tribute to the women and men who lost their battle to breast cancer. And we lift up those in the midst of their fight as well as their family. We pray for their strength, recovery, and rejuvenation. And we celebrate the survivors and ask God to keep them and that they not only survive, but thrive and boldly testify and tell the story of what the Lord has brought them through. The key saints is early detection. Women between the ages of 25 to 40 should have a clinical breast ex examination annually, ideally at your yearly checkup. Women 40 and over should have an annual mammogram in addition to their yearly clinical breast examination. Don't wait until something's wrong. You need a checkup every year, and that goes for the men too, you hear me? Last but not least, I would be remiss to move on without giving a major shout out and thank you to the team of volunteers from Lakewood UMC and Ebenezer that sacrificed their Saturday and their backs and their knees and their necks to paint the church yesterday. Now look, I'm gonna say this. The church is coming along beautifully, and I know that you, like me, are ready to worship and fellowship within those beautiful walls, but there is still work to be done. Each of us, as the body of Christ, has something unique to offer, be it talent, time, and or resources. I implore you to reach out to the church leadership to see what is needed and how you can be of service. Don't wait for a personal invitation when you know there's work being done. This is God's house in your church. There is room for you and you are welcome to give and serve in whatever capacity God has placed in your heart. Okay, I've said plenty. You've had time to grab your family and your communion, your communion elements and make whatever pit stops you need to make. Now it's time to take your seat, focus, and worship with us. Go ahead and share today's service and don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe at The Ebenezer UMC on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Let the praise and worship begin. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord for saving us. We invite you today to cry out to God and let him know exactly what's on your heart. Let's go to the throne of grace. Precious God, we thank you for this day, oh God, a day that we've never seen before, oh God, a day that you've given us, oh God. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, that you saw fit to wake us up this morning, God. So today, right now, God, we ask that you bless all those that have gathered, oh God, under the sound of my voice, oh God, to sing praises and give glory to your name, God. We ask that you bless them, oh God. Right now, Lord God, we have had a, a hard week, oh God. Some people have had a trying time, oh God, but we know you, oh God, if we but yet trust in you, oh God, that you will make all things light. So right now, God, we lean on you, oh God. We stand on your word, God. You said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So right now, God, we thank you for who you are and we ask that you pour out your blessing here upon us today, oh God. Lord, we thank you for those, oh God, who are in a spirit of bereavement, oh God. We ask that you be with them, oh God. Give them traveling grace, oh God. God, we ask right now that you would go into our schools, oh God. Lord, there's so much disruption right now, God. And we ask that you send your peace, oh God, in our school system, oh God, in the administration office, oh God, in the classroom, on the school bus, God, in our homes, oh God. Bring our children back to you, oh God, not just the little bitty babies, oh God, but from zero to 99 and above, oh God. Bring us back to you, oh God. We need to return to your love. We need to return to you, oh God. And we're asking God that you touch us and reach us, oh God. Lord, right now, someone needs to hear a word from your God. Today, as we prepare to take the bread of God of life and to drink, oh God, the blood in remembrance of who you are and how you sacrifice, oh God, remind us, oh God, that you are the true and living God. And for that, we thank you, oh God. 
We thank you in advance for the lives that's going to be changed. We thank you in advance, oh God, for the movement that's going to happen. God, we know that you have all power. And right now, oh God, we need your power. We need your love. We need your glory, God, in our lives and our hearts, God. Thank you, God. Be with our pastor today as she prepares to break the bread, oh God, of life. She's going to proclaim your word, oh God, that's going to change someone's life. We're here with open arms, seeking your face, seeking your spirit, God. Pour into us, oh God. Anything that's missing, oh God, pour into us. Fill us up, oh God. Fill us with your glory. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with your love, oh God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and we say thank you, Lord.
Good morning to you, saints. It's great to be here with you. If you would now prepare your hearts um, for the reading of the word, Jeremiah 33, verses 1 through 3. Hear now the reading of the word. While Jeremiah was confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says, he who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. This is the word of God for the people of God and the people of God say and type, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we trust and know that you are the mighty one. You are the one who called us um, to follow you, Lord. God, open our ears and our hearts this morning. I ask, Lord God, that you be with our families, you be with the bereaved. We lift up the Thomas family and Brother um, Calvin as his dad has gone on to glory, Lord. Comfort them. Pour out your peace upon your people, O oh God. Remind us that prayer still works, that prayer changes things, God, and that we celebrate today that you invite us and call us to call out to you and to be in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Saints, what a refreshing right now word this is. What a powerful and liberating word that comes to the prophet Jeremiah. I don't know about you, but hearing these words just really lifted my spirit and was just such a great reminder. To see and know that the prophet Jeremiah was confined and in trouble, but hears another word from the Lord right in that moment. Does anyone feel confined right now? Does anyone need to hear a word from the Lord, a reminder that God is with you? Let's take a look at the context that surrounds this moment. Amen. So Jeremiah records these verses while he is imprisoned in the court of the guard where the elders and the king's officials would consult him. Jeremiah, um, this was a time where Jerusalem was under siege and people were rebellious against God. I mean, this was a desperate time. Does that sound familiar to anyone? In fact, some folks had even plotted and planned against Jeremiah's life because of the difficult message from the Lord that he was tasked with delivering because thus says the Lord. It was his delivering the word from the Lord that Judah would soon um, start 70 years in captivity that got him tossed into prison. Let me just tell you, everybody doesn't always want to hear and obey what the Lord has to say when it is a difficult word or even when it is a word of correction and conviction. Amen. But what a powerful and liberating word from the Lord that comes to the prophet Jeremiah in the midst of all of this and that it was not an easy time for him. Jeremiah is distressed, he's perplexed and confounded, and yet he remains focused and faithful to God. For God had assured him that things would be restored. He had assured him that nothing is too difficult for God to handle. Though his people were defiant and rebellious, God would unify them in singleness of heart through an everlasting covenant and by putting the fear of God in their hearts. Jeremiah's restored confidence in God, his plan and God's provision and God's power positioned him to ask for the restoration of his people. But I love this text because it is clear the circumstances in which Jeremiah faces. And right here in the middle of the messiness, in the middle of all of the turmoil and chaos, we are reminded that even if we find ourselves confined in prison, or even if we're held captive by others, that we can still be confident that we can and will hear a word from the Lord. That the Lord can reach us wherever we are in solitary, whether we're in solitary confinement or isolation. 
that we can be confident that the word of the Lord can be impressed upon us even when we are bound by life, by circumstances, imprisoned by regret and heartache, that we can be encouraged that no matter what is happening in our lives, that the Lord of Lords is with us in the valley moments, that the Lord of Lords is with us in the mountain, in the storms, and even in prison. And listen, I'm not just talking about a physical prison. This ought to still be a liberating news um, to you, knowing that whatever prison you may find yourself in, whether it's mentally or physically or spiritually or health-wise, that God hears you and answers you when you call to him. You may be confined in a downward spiral of depression and disappointment. You may be tied down and imprisoned by envy or jealousy, bound by unforgiveness and resentment, tormented by regrets and poor decisions, paralyzed by fear of abandonment and anxiety. You may have found yourself in a pit of fury of frustration or anger or rage. You may even be confined while struggling with self-control, addictions, loneliness, grief, a lack of confidence, an identity crisis, battling self-esteem issues. I don't know what your cell block is. I don't know what you're confined to. I don't know how long or how you have been imprisoned. But what I do know is that this word tells me that even in those temporary spaces of confined circumstances that life often confronts us with, sometimes even on a daily basis, that you can be confident and assured that if you just call out to God, that he will answer. That if you call out to the one who is able to set us free, that if you call out to our all-powerful God we serve, that if you just call out to the one who has power and dominion over everything, call out to the one who fights your battle, call out to the one who can resurrect it and restore it, if you just call out to the one that would deliver a word to you that would change and transform life forever. The Lord says in this text, if you just call out to me, I will answer. Daughters and sons of the Most High, I stopped by this morning to remind you today that even though the most, even in our most desperate situations um, that people can be deprived or seeming like they're absent of God, that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Listen, you can be physically confined, spiritually depleted, and emotionally arrested, but you need to know that God still hears you when you call out to him. Even when you are physically, mentally, and emotionally locked up, you can still be spiritually free. But you have to cry out, you have to call out, you have to shout out, you have to scream out, you have to talk it out. However you need to get it out, you have to call out unto the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Yes, you may be confined, but you can still be confident. Let me say that again. You may be confined, but you can still be confident in the God you serve. When the Lord says in this text, call out to me, the Lord is extending an invitation for you to just open your mouth and call on him for yourself. He didn't say call on the preacher. He didn't say call on your mom or pow pow or mau mau or whoever it is, auntie, the evangelist, the apostles, the bishops. He said, call to me. God invites Jeremiah and all who heard this word to come to him in faith-filled prayer and to be confident that he will answer. What an assuring word from the Lord. Or in this case, an reassuring word for the Lord. After all, this was the second time that the Lord had given um, Jeremiah a word. See, the Lord is always seeking to invite us into relationship and covenant with him. And think about it. The promise of this word is noteworthy when you consider the circumstances around it. 
This was a time of siege and a promised judgment. But even as the judgment was close, God yet spoke a word of hope, a word of faith, and gave an invitation, extended an invitation to Jeremiah and Jerusalem. Doesn't it bless your heart, saints? Doesn't it bless your heart and your soul to know that God wants to hear from you? That God wants you to call out to him? That everything in your life doesn't have to be going great or perfect? That you can go to God when you're hurting, you can go to God when you're scared or afraid, when you're feeling vulnerable, when you're disappointed. God wants to hear your innermost thoughts and feelings, but he wants you to trust him with them. Why? Because that's the type of God we serve. See, this isn't just any little G God or idol like the Israelites and Babylonians worship. This God that we speak of that spoke to Jeremiah, this word can be trusted because it comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord who has set the sun and hung the moon. This is a God who knows all of the intimate and int intricate details and the hidden things of our lives, the God who restores the God who makes dry bones live. You need to know the God that you're calling on, saints. And that comes through relationship. That comes through knowing God's character, through knowing God's word. You need to know the God that you're calling on. I ask you, have you gotten acquainted with the one that you call father? Have you spent time calling out to the one that can change your circumstances and change your heart and your situation? Saints of God, this word in Jeremiah is an invitation to call to the Lord. Now, you know, there are many people in your life that have shut you down and will tell you, don't call me when you're in trouble. Don't call me when you're stressed out. Don't call me. They'll block you. They'll report you. They'll ignore you, send you straight to voicemail, swear they didn't get that text message and won't open it all the way so the little read receipt won't come. <laughs> you know how it is, saints. I know I'm not the only one. And meanwhile, you're sitting there waiting for hours, wondering, are they going to call me back? Is someone going to be there for me when I need them? Trying to see if they will answer um, you because you have found yourself in a bind and need some help. You know how we all had that one person say, don't call me with that. <laughs> well, there is yet good news saying. God is inviting you into a relationship with him and saying you can call on the Lord anytime, all the time, and every time. The word says when you call to him, he says, I will answer. Psalm 50, 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. It's for God's glory. Psalm 91, 15 when he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. Saints, we've got to open our mouths. You've got to open your mouth. This is a word from the Lord that invites you to deepen your prayer life. This is a call to prayer. You've heard the saying, closed mouths don't get fed. But I ask you, are you hungry for God's word? Are you thirsty for the word of God? Are you anxious to call out to God? It's time to open up your mouth and call out. This is a time of prayer. The word call um, here means to cry out or to utter a loud sound, to proclaim. It's a call for help. You have permission from the Most High to cry out and call on the Lord. God will speak to us if we are willing to be still and listen. But you've got to call out. God has given us his word and he has given us the Holy Spirit to be able to discern and keep it. You see, Jeremiah learned that divine revelation becomes a reality when it is sought. You've got to go after it. You've got to do your part. God's going to do what God's going to do, but you've got to do your point, your part. And by calling out to God, 
Jeremiah is empowered by God to live out his God-given hope of future restoration in a time of personal crisis and national emergency. His hope and the focus of his ministry was for divine restoration. And now God invites him to ask him for what seems humanly impossible. And he's right. It is humanly impossible, but with God, all things are possible. God does the things in us, through us, to us, and around us that no one can take credit or glory for. But we have to call out to him. We have to be in prayer with God. We have to accept God's invitation to pray and be in communion and relationship with God. And see, when we pray and call to him, God's powerful hand begins to bring about change. It begins to bring something great and new and different. Our hearts begin to be changed and softened and healed. Real change and transformation comes from within and it's not always visible. But we've got to allow God to do the work inside of us. Amen. See, sometimes we cannot perceive what will happen. But change begins to happen because crying out and calling out to God brings change. Our prayers bring about change, saints. Let me remind you uh, once more, verse 3, which says, Call to me and I will answer. I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Here's the good news. God would share with Jeremiah things the prophet did not know nor understand about Israel's future. But prayer, the calling out, the crying out, even in confinement, is the key to all the treasures of life. It changes the atmosphere of our nation. It changes our communities. It changes our leaders. It changes ourselves. It changes families. It changes churches. It changes relationships. It changes even the seemingly impossible things to men. Remember that to God, everything is possible to those who believe. And whenever we pray, things in our life and around us start to change because prayer changes things. Saints, God desires to give you the things of your heart and to make known to you even the utmost unsearchable things. But there is no knowing without knowing God for yourself. Amen? Amen. Friends, if you would prepare your hearts for communion. Sisters and brothers, God on this day, God has given us yet another opportunity to join together wherever we are at the table of the Lord. And God invites you to God's table because God loves you deeply. And I know that we are distant from one another in a physical sense, but saints, the good news is that God is with us and invites us to his table. God's spirit is with us and it is through the spirit of God that rains down upon us and makes us one community. It is the spirit of God that brings us together. It is the blood of Christ that washes us from our sins and calls us to be healed. For this great love, we can be grateful knowing that there is freedom through Christ Jesus. We are free from sin and are no longer slave to sin. When we choose to accept what Christ freely offers us. It is the body of Christ that was broken so that we may be whole. And so now, wherever you are, I invite you to prepare to share in Holy Communion in these signs and symbols of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, 
our risen Lord and Savior. We do this being reminded of what he has done until he comes again. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in all of our many places and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory as we feast at his heavenly banquet. And through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and all glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as, your, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you would now hold your elements in your hand and let us prepare to take communion together. Let us break the bread, knowing that the bread represents Jesus' body being broken so that our body could be made whole. The body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and be thankful.
and let us take the cup. Knowing that this cup represents for us the blood of Jesus and knowing that this blood continues to wash away our sins, the blood of Christ shed just for you. Take, drink, and be thankful. Amen. Saints, let us pray. Lord God, bless us in our time together. We thank you, God, that we can come and gather in the many spaces that we are and remember, Lord, your sacrifice on the cross. We celebrate and we give you thanksgiving, God, that you not only died on the cross as a sacrifice for us, but you got up. You got up with all power and all authority, and we thank you, Lord, and we await you as you prepare to come again. And as we're waiting, God, pray, prepare us, prepare our hearts, allow us to do the work that you called us to do in this season, in this moment right now. Bless us and keep our families. Teach us to be more like you, to be representatives of God and to follow you wherever you lead us. In the name of Jesus, amen. The saints, let's continue our worship through our giving. Followers of Jesus, it's time for tithes and offering. Where are my cheerful givers this morning? 2 Corinthians 9, 7 reminds us that each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The truth is, God loves everybody, but what he loves about a cheerful giver is that they get it. They get the connection between spiritual growth and generosity. They get that giving is itself a blessing to the giver. They get it. Cheerful givers know that they get it. Not that those who are not in a position to give and that they don't get it, but there are far more of those who can and don't and those who think they can't, but probably could. But to both of you, God says, I love a cheerful giver. And I invite you to give cheerfully through any of our four safe and secure ways to give. You can give through Zelle using the email address ebenezerumcfinance at gmail.com. You can give through the Tithely app or by clicking the link in the chat. Tides and offerings can also be mailed or dropped off at Ebenezer UMC at 7312 North Main Street, Houston, Texas, 77022. And don't forget, you can automate your giving through the Tithely app. I want you to know that your giving and gifts make are making a kingdom difference and has allowed us to be able to serve our mission field and take care of the business of the church. We are so grateful. God has been so faithful. But however you decide to share your God-given gifts today, we thank God for you and for your heart to give, whether you give financially or through your prayers, presence, and service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God's blessings.